Gothenburger Social Club, one of the hottest pop-up restaurants in the city, has finally landed a permanent location. The establishment may just serve the best smash burgers in NYC, and I just had to check it out. It's a very cold, gray, and dismal winter day here in New York City. Right now I'm along the Hudson River just freezing my absolute ass off. But thankfully, earlier in the day, I had a fantastic lunch at one of the city's hottest new burger restaurants. I went to Gotham Burger Social Club. Now, it's not exactly new per se because the concept has existed as a pop-up for a little bit now. However, it has finally opened a brick-and-mortar establishment on the Lower East Side. Now, I've never been to any of the pop-ups for Gotham Burger, but I've always wanted to try it. Gotham offers Oklahoma-style fried onion burgers. Now, that is a style of burger that's not commonly seen here in New York City. It's basically a burger where onions are smashed right with the patty on the flat top, and they're cooked right into the meat. However, that type of burger did kind of come into the spotlight recently here in NYC with the opening of George Motz's Hamburger America down in Soho. At his restaurant, Motz offers a traditional Oklahoma-style fried onion burger. And now, with the opening of Gotham Burger Social, it's really nice to see the Oklahoma-style fried onion burger come into the spotlight and get some of the recognition it deserves. At Gotham Burger Social, however, that type of burger does come with a bit of a twist. Now, I was actually planning to visit this restaurant last week on Thursday, just one day after it opened, but I was so busy that day, I just couldn't get away from work. And by the time I actually finished my work and had time to actually eat lunch, it was like 3 p.m. Plus, on Instagram, I saw the insane amount of people that lined up for the restaurant on its first day. So I thought, it's 3 p.m., it's pretty late. I don't want to go all the way down to the Lower East Side and wait in line for God knows how long. But thankfully, I did have some time on this freezing cold Monday to warm my soul with an absolutely fantastic burger and some excellent food overall at Gotham Burger Social Club. And this was my lunch. Gotham Burger Social Club is located on the Lower East Side. In fact, it's only a few blocks away from the legendary Katz's Delicatessen. I arrived to the restaurant about five minutes before it opened, and thankfully there wasn't much of a line. As a concept, Gotham Burger was started in 2013 by Mike Puma. He began with a Facebook post asking his friends if they wanted to do an NYC burger tour. The result were consistent group meets of sampling and reviewing burgers until an animal rescue outfit called Social Tees reached out and proposed doing an event together in which Gotham Burger would actually make and sell a burger with the proceeds going to the rescue. This prompted Puma to craft an early rendition of the burger he now serves today. As I waited in line to make my order, it was clear that the restaurant was still finding its footing as one of the employees announced that they didn't have their supply of fries ready yet to serve. This wasn't much of a surprise to me as I saw the restaurant post an Instagram story the previous day stating that they sold out of a few items. Luckily, it seemed as though all the other sides were available. In terms of beverages, there's beer, wine, and egg cream, and even an Aperol spritz, which seemed unique for a burger restaurant, so I just had to get it. After relaying my order, I paid and gave my phone number, which would allow the restaurant to text me when my food was ready, and then I found a seat. So I just ordered, and yeah, I got a lot of food, but I am so hyped for this. I'm also really hungry right now. I like the design of the place. It's got kind of like a diner slash western vibe. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Old Cheval location in Chicago, but uh, yeah, it's a good space. The Soho-based interior design studio Hyphen & Company is responsible for the look of the restaurant, and I thought they did a great job. The result was a fine atmosphere to enjoy a burger in. I also appreciated the fact that the music being played didn't necessarily match the Western-style interior as country music and the like is something that I don't really enjoy. Soon enough, I received a text alerting me that my order was ready. It was indeed an appetizing-looking tray of food. However, there was a bit of an issue with my Aperol spritz. The restaurant didn't have enough Aperol to make the cocktail. This resulted in owner Mike Puma trying to go to a liquor store to buy more, but unfortunately, the store wasn't open yet. To me, it wasn't that big of a deal as I switched my drink order to a draft stout, and that probably was for the best. The beer was wonderful. It had great flavor, a nice body, and perfectly complemented my burger. A solid burger paired with a good beer is a beautiful thing. Yeah.
You know, this is a really solid beer. Really hits the spots. And while I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get to try an Emerald Spritz with a burger, I mean, it's just such a bizarre pairing that I had to have it. A beer is a certainly a much more logical pairing. And this beer pairs very well with my burger. And speaking of my burger, it was time to give it a try. The restaurant offers single, double, and triple cheeseburgers. I went with a double with everything on it. My first bite was just pure satisfaction. Oh, that is a damn fine burger. That lives up to the heart. Starting with the beef, it's topped with shaved onions and smashed on a flat top grill. As a result, the meat develops a wonderful crust and texture and the onions are caramelized. The onions really added to the whole profile of the burger. In terms of flavor, it's just plain delicious and has a sort of nostalgic feel. The burger is just so craveable and satisfying. Topping the beef are slices of American cheese, a true cheeseburger staple. To me, the burger felt extra cheesy and I mean that in the best possible way. Holding everything together is a toasted Martin's potato roll. Now the beef, cheese, and onions certainly made for a satisfying classic Oklahoma-style fried onion burger, but Gotham goes their own way with regards to the toppings. There's pickled jalapenos for spice, along with the restaurant's own special bread and butter style pickles. Next, the sandwich is finished with a few different sauces. There's ketchup and mustard and a special house-made burger sauce. Overall, the toppings went great on the burger, but honestly, I felt that I might have enjoyed this sandwich even more without some of them. While the toppings were tasty, they were almost at a distraction from the best flavors of the burger, mainly the meat, cheese, and onions. Plus, ketchup is just not my favorite condiment to begin with. Still, the burger was just plain awesome, but I think next time I'll have them hold the ketchup and mustard. For a side dish, I would have gone with the fries, but since they weren't available yet for the day, I chose the onion rings instead. That turned out to be a great choice, as the onion rings were incredible. They were perfectly fried and had a crispy and delicious breading. I was also glad that there's a pretty generous amount of onion rings in each serving. There's enough in there that you could pretty much share the side with another person, but knowing how good they are, there's no way in hell that I would be doing that. You know, I'm actually kind of glad that they ran out of fries because these onion rings, they're really good. For dipping, I chose a cup of ranch sauce. However, that wasn't your average ranch. There's a good bit of dill in the sauce, which I just loved. Combining the ranch with the onion rings made for a truly enjoyable side dish to have alongside my burger. One other item that I just had to try was the chopped cheese taco. It's basically a rendition of the classic chopped cheese sandwich that was popularized in New York City bodegas. Gotham's example includes a toasted flour tortilla, jalapenos, crema, shredded lettuce, roma tomatoes, and cotilla cheese. I liked it. It's exactly what it claims to be. It's a chopped cheese and a taco. The beef mixed with the cheese and the other components made for some really nice bites. However, I still prefer the classic chopped cheese sandwich with bread as opposed to a tortilla. This is not just because of the difference in flavor and body, but also how the components are more evenly distributed in a sandwich, whereas the beef sort of sinks to the bottom of the taco. Still, I enjoyed consuming that taco. Overall, everything I had at Gotham was incredibly delicious and satisfying. Everything on this plate is just so tasty, from the onion rings to the taco to the burger. It is just a perfect lunch. Mike Puma has really created something special. For years, Puma worked on Wall Street before putting all of his efforts into Gotham Burger Social Club. In a 2023 Forbes article, Puma was discussing the difference between making money for his clients on Wall Street and serving his customers burgers. Puma said, quote, the response when I was working with clients is just never the same response as when somebody loves your food. The gratification from it and to see people's faces light up, it never came close. During my visit, I definitely saw a lot of satisfied customers. Ah, oh, that was one fine lunch. That certainly hit the spot. I am whoa. Although there is no desserts here, which is a shame though, but I'm gonna go get coffee and uh, walk off this excellent meal. My bill totaled to $37.01, but I did give a modest tip, which equated to about 44 bucks. It wasn't exactly a cheap burger lunch, but it was a pretty damn good one.
Ah, so that was one fantastic and satisfying lunch. I really enjoyed it. That burger was delicious, but every item of food that I had was fantastic. Especially those onion rings. My God, were they good. I mean, it really was a happy accident that they didn't have any fries available because I really enjoyed those onion rings. Although it was a little bit of a bummer that they didn't have the April spritz there, but like I said, that beer probably was a better pairing anyways. Things hardly ever run perfectly smooth when a restaurant first opens. I'm sure in two to three weeks, Gothenburger Social Club is gonna be running in tip top shape. But still, even despite those small hiccups, it was a fantastic experience and the food was excellent. And that is the most important part. It's so nice that Gothenburger Social Club finally has their own space. They are a fantastic addition to the New York City burger scene and I'll definitely be back. But right now, I'm gonna run to get some much needed coffee.